On the meaning of overcoming gluttony and the power of fasting. My personal struggle with sin includes gluttony a lot. I love to eat, I love food more than I should, and it's a continuous downfall to me because I tend to overeat continuously. As I was continuously overcome by this problem and just continued confessing and confessing without seeing any change, I made the decision to learn to fast because this is really the tool to overcome it. I have thus learned that fasting is very important for the spiritual development and I have myself seen really big benefits from it. I would like to summarize what I have learned from the book which is called Letter of Divine Ascent, which was written by Saint John Climacus. Here I learned that the overcoming of gluttony and learning to fast is really the, the key in our spiritual progress and helps us with all other aspects as well. So mastering the stomach means really to leap forward in our spiritual path. I made the commitment to really learn fasting and I would like to share what I have learned from this book. John Climacus dedicates the whole chapter 14 on overcoming the stomach. This chapter is called On the Clamorous Yet Wicked Master, the Stomach. There is a little conversation between someone who's asking the stomach and the stomach answering. So the question is, Tell us, stomach, you torment of all mortals, who has bought all with the gold of greed. How did you get access to us? And what do you usually produce after your coming? And what is the manner of your departure from us? And gluttony, annoyed by these insults, raving with fury against us and foaming, replies, why are you, you are my slave, overwhelm me with reproaches? How are you trying to escape from me? I am bound to you by nature. The door for me to enter is the nature of foods. The cause of my insatiability is habit. The foundation of my passion is repeated habit. Insensibility of soul and also forgetfulness of death. How do you seek to learn the names of my children? If I count them, they will be more in number than the sand. But learn at least the names of my firstborn and beloved children. My firstborn son is the minister of fornication. The second after him is hardness of heart. And the third is sleepiness. From me, the stomach, proceed a sea of bad thoughts, waves of filth, depth of unknown and unnamed impurities. My daughters are laziness, talkativeness, familiarity in speech, jesting, facetiousness, contradiction, a stiff neck, obstinacy, disobedience, insensibility, Captivity, conceit, audacity, boasting, after which follows impure prayer, whirling of thoughts and often unexpected and sudden misfortunes, with which is closely bound despair, the most evil of all my daughters. The remembrance of fall resists me but does not conquer me. The thought of death is always hostile to me, the stomach. But there is nothing among men that destroys me completely. Only he who has received the Comforter, that is, the Holy Spirit, and prays to him against me. The Comforter then, when appealed to, does not allow me to act passionately. But those who have not tasted his gift inevitably seek their pleasure in my sweetness. The victory over the vice of gluttony is a courageous one. He who is able, let him hasten to this passion and to the highest degree of chastity. 
From his writing, I learned also that gluttony is the starting point of all fleshliness. That means to conquer gluttony, it means at the same time to conquer flesh. It means to conquer lust, fornication, sexual desire. It means also to conquer materialism. Because as the stomach tries to have more and more and more all the time, so if we if we give in to that, we also want to accumulate more things, more possessions. We are craving for this earth instead of spiritual things. So it means if we master the stomach, really, we get a great benefit for many other areas of spiritual development. Mastering the stomach is key. He says that the stomach is continuously lying to us, pretending it needs food when we actually have eaten just some time ago. And there's a desire for different tastes. And if we have eat this taste, then we desire another one. And so we go on and on between sweet and different tastes. And there's really no end to it if we continue. So we may not give in to this desire to, to eat all the time. Instead, we need to master this desire. We need to rule against it. We need to be hard against it. If we follow the desire, it grows stronger and stronger every time. And it will more and more overpower us. So we need to learn to really go against it. How can we do that? We can avoid to buy the food that we like the most. Avoid sweets, avoid chocolates. Avoid things that we just tend to eat without having a proper meal. Every type of snack, chips, crisps, peanuts, anything like that. If we don't buy it, we don't have it, we can't eat it. Easy. We have to realize the desire of the stomach is really a great enemy. John Climacus tells us, master your stomach before it masters you. So there is an actual real battle going on and the enemy can always use our stomach against us if we let him. We are told, the mind of a faster prays soberly, but the mind of an intemperate person is filled with impure idols. By stinting and depriving the stomach, the heart is humbled, but by pleasing the stomach, the mind and heart become proud. We advise to learn to eat smaller portions, because if we eat a lot, actually our stomach extends in size. But if we learn to reduce the amount of food we bring into our stomach, the stomach adjusts to it. And then we do not desire so much amount of food anymore. John Climacus tells us, when the stomach overcomes you, tame it by labors. And if this is impossible owing to weakness, struggle with it by vigil, by prayer. Spacious and broad is the way of gluttony that leads to the perdition of fornication and many there are who go in it. Because narrow is the gate, and hard is the way of fasting, that leads to the life of purity, and few are there who go in it. The prince of demons is the fallen Lucifer, Satan, and the prince of passions is gluttony. When sitting at a table laden with food, remember death and judgment. In taking drink, do not cease to imagine the vinegar and gall of your Lord. And you will certainly either be temperate, or you will sigh and humble your mind. Do not be deceived. You will not be delivered from the cruel Pharaoh, the stomach. And you will not see the heavenly Passover unless you continually eat bitter herbs and unleavened bread. The bitter herb that is the coercion and pain of fasting. The unleavened bread that is a mind that is not puffed up, a humble mind. Let this be knit to your breathing, the word of him who says, But I, when demons troubled me, put on sackcloth and humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer stuck to the bosom of my soul. Fasting is the coercion of nature and the cutting out of everything that delights the palate, the prevention of lust, the uprooting of bad thoughts, deliverance from dreams, purity of prayer, the light of the soul, the guarding of the mind, deliverance from blindness, the door of compunction, 
humble sighing, glad contrition, a means to silence, a guard of obedience, lightness of sleep, health for the body, agent of dispassion, remission of sins, and the gate of paradise and its delight. Let us now pray to receive the grace for fasting. Dearest Lord Jesus and Holy Trinity, we come to your aid to overcome the gluttony that is limiting us in so many ways. Please give us the desire to free us from it. Help us in every step of the way. Lead us, teach us, give us the means, give us the, the strength to overcome. Fill us with the light that we need to see clearly how it brought us down too many times. Give us a desire to really seek your kingdom above everything and not be hindered by our own desires of food. Heavenly Father, we trust in you. You can do everything and nothing is impossible to you, our God and Master. Grant us the grace to learn to fast. Guide us and teach us, Holy Spirit, we turn to you for your help. We need you. And Lord Jesus, your precious blood, forgive us the sins we have committed by overeating, by gluttony and by following the stomach and our fleshly desire and materialism that keeps us in delusion. Open to us the gate of repentance and help us to really change our lives and seek your kingdom alone. Dear Mother Mary, we also implore your help Give us the graces that we need. Help us as our beloved mother who takes care of her little, even stupid children. Help us to change your mother. Our dear personal angels, please also remind us, strengthen us, help us to learn to fast. All praise be to God our Father, to Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May God's blessings be upon you always.